at Gapmind Foundation, we, we have our mission statement is to unveil the beauty of statistics for a fact-based worldview. This doesn't mean that we think the world can be understood with only statistics. In fact, there are many dimensions of global development that cannot be displayed in statistics because some aspects cannot be measured in numbers, some can be measured in numbers but are not measured. So look what we can present. What we can present, if you click here on Gapminder World, what you will see is this type of graph, where we represent each country here is a bubble. The size of the bubble show the size of the population. China is big and India is big. Now, the, the color here is the continent. The yellow ones is the Americas, blue is Africa, uh, green is Arab countries, uh, red is uh, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and the Pacific. Now, on this axis down here in the default graph, we have income per person in GDP per capita. On this axis here, we have life expectancy at birth. This means that bubbles that are high up, they have good health, and which are down here has bad health. If they are to the right, they have uh, high income per person, to the left they have low income per person. And you can see there's a relation between health and wealth in the world. There is relatively good health in a number of emerging economies and middle income countries, but, but the disparity in the world is very, very wide. In, back here we have Congo, Democratic Republic of Congo, and up here we have Japan. Now, how much of this progress in wealth and progress in health was related to improve human rights and to democracy. And here starts my problem. Because there is no good time series of human rights. In fact, if I would go out on the web, I can find statistics on, on human rights. On this blog, for instance, uh, there is a very good collection of, of, of human rights statistics. But typically, it's a lot of indicators. There is not one or a few overriding statistical indicators for human rights. And, and if I go to, to Amnesty International, I will find that this organization have chosen another approach. They have a report for each country each year. Look, I can click on Afghanistan here. And when I uh, go for Afghanistan, they will load the report. And in the report, it's not by numbers. It said how human rights is. It's by specific reports on different, different issues. And, and, I, and I could go back to, to, to the country list and look at uh, other countries. And you will find differences. I think this is a very good choice that Amnesty International have done. Instead of focus of numeric measurements, they make report on crucial issues for human rights in different countries. Now, when we come to democracy, uh, there is many projects like this one, Polity 4 project uh, from uh, Colorado State University and University of Maryland. They provide a numerical measurement of sort of democracy on how the government responds to people, people's interests. In, in the concept of these researchers, what is good with this project is that they meticulously document how they have calculated. And that's what I intended to show you by going back to Gapmind the World here. Here in Gapmind the World, I can choose to change the color, and instead I go down under advanced users, we have put this democracy indicator. Because it's not so easy to interpret. Now, what do I show? I show that a country like United States, they score 10 on democracy. That means the highest score you can get. Whereas North Korea score minus nine, almost as low as you can come. So it means that blue and dark blue, that's low degree of democracy. Reddish is high and green and yellow is somewhere in between. Now the first thing you see is that there is no clear relationship between income and color of the bubbles. Neither is there a clear relationship between health and the, and the color of the bubbles. If I go back here, I can come to 1948. In 1948, I see that United States already scored 10. I get surprised immediately. Because 
slavery was rampant in the United States that year, and still they score full on democracy score. Obviously strange. Eh? And, 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 and then I can rush forwards into modern time and you see how countries change. They tend to be a little more red there in the top, but they also red countries down in the other end. And this is where we are today. Eh? When we can see that a country like Sweden scores full 10 scores in democracy. Mm, little strange to me. We have a hereditary monarchy and we should have some discount for that. That's not democratic, even if it's well functioning as at present. Uh -huh. And look here, we have two countries who are close to each other. It's Cuba and it's Costa Rica. Costa Rica scores high in democracy. Cuba scores low in these scores made by the American University. How has that affected their development? They are obviously very close to each other. I'm going to mark both of them. Huh? I'm going to take away the rest of the world. And I'm going to take them backwards in history. And I go to that year when the present regime more or less sized power in Cuba. Huh? And that is Costa Rica and that is Cuba. And look, these two countries have moved uh, ahead more or less in similar rates. There have been hiccups and there have been change. Now, when it comes to measurement of health, I often hear people say there's something false with the statistics in Cuba. Mm, I would not say so. I've had the privilege to work together with professional people in epidemiology and health statistics in Cuba. And as far as I've seen, it's quite good statistics there. Eh? I also noted during my stay in Cuba, that there was not the freedom of speech. But that doesn't imply that I can't trust the health statistics. Now, when it comes to the statistics for economics in, in Cuba, that's obviously difficult because it's sort of a planning economy and to convert that in comparable money, that's difficult. I would put a big uncertainty range on the economic level of Cuba. But health by Costa Rica and Cuba are more or less the same. Whereas when it comes to human rights and democracy, the countries are different. Now, what about the rest of the world? I will change the life expectancy here, and I will put the same indicator here as I used for color to make it even more clear. Look here. The income per person on this axis and Democracy score on this axis shows you that there's a very weak relation between economic level and degree of democracy in the world. And if I change income level here and I put life expectancy down there, you will see that also when it comes to, comes to um, how long you live, we show that on this axis here, and democracy score here. It's not a strong relation. We have quite healthy countries that are down here, Saudi Arabia, China, Cuba, which have very low democracy scores. And we have countries up here, Papua New Guinea, South Africa, Kenya, Namibia, and Nigeria. This has relatively good democracy score, but which are not healthy at all. So, in short, there's a weak relation with democracy and health and wealth as we measure it in statistics. Now, this is the reason why I really didn't want to do this presentation. Because there can be two reasons for this. One is that we are very bad at measuring democracy and human rights. But the other could also be that the country can grow wealthy and healthy without the citizens having democratic and human rights. My view is that independent of whether human rights drives economic growth or health improvement, it has a value of its own. And so does the right for cultural expression and the freedom of speech. I think too often we argue for human rights and democracy as a mean to achieving something else. To me, even if I'm a statistic geek, human rights has a value of its own 